Today we're going to have a look at uh, what timber size to use to make your door. When you buy the plans, there's a set timber size on there, but uh, timber's not available in, the, in those exact sizes all over the world. Um, and it actually doesn't matter what size timber you use. Uh, typically, in the plans, we use something like this, which is uh, two by one, roughly. But uh, when you buy timber uh, in the shops, a two by one is sometimes not two by two by one. Sometimes it's less than that because it's been planed up. This started life as a two by two. Now, if I measure it, it's actually an inch and three quarters. So the, from now on, we'll talk about actual sizes and not about the two by one, two by two thing. That's not actually really two by two. Uh, it's very confusing. And across in the States, um, timber sizes are different again. I think I think two by two is typically one and a half by one and a half, and three by two is one and a half by two and a half. It's all really confusing. So what we'll do is we'll deal with finished size timber. Uh, I'll tell you the sizes that I use, and I'll tell you the sizes that it's that are best to use. And that way you, you've got an idea of where you can go with your wood. <coughs> okay, typically for most of the plans, Right the way up to uh, this one here, which is the JD27, uh, 20 foot dome, see that there, I'm using uh, this, it's about uh, inch and three quarters by, I'll just measure this for you, by about an inch. So the, the widest point's an inch, and, and that on the bottom, because it's got an angle on it, I'll just show you that, so it's an inch across the bottom. And inch and three quarters up here. I use this for most of the smaller size domes, the uh, the, the ten foot, three meter one, the um, four point eight meter, which is uh, fifteen foot, and the twenty foot, which is six meters. I use all the same timber for them. Uh, what I do is I get a bit of. Uh, let's see if I can find a bit. Here we go. This is inch and three quarters square. I then cut it at the angle down the centre. Put one piece through the saw, then take the scrap that came off and put that through the saw as well. Because that way you know that they're exactly the same size. Uh, if you just try and guess the middle, if, if there's a slight difference in the wood, which I have found that there is, sometimes there are a mill out here or there, it'll mess up your whole dome. So put both pieces through. Okay, well, uh, well let's move on to what different sizes you can use. Um, that's what I typically use. Uh, in the States, it's uh, it tends to be smaller. So I would use a 3x2, uh, which is 2.5 by 1.5. Cut the same way, but that's the long... Put it that way. Cut the same way because you'll get a bit more meat on your... Uh, timber okay next question is people say well what about the pattern what difference does that make to the pattern and can you give me the sizes for the uh, patterns and jigs right the, the size depends on the thickness of strut that you're using so what you need to do first is choose the, the um, timber that you uh, want to use what's locally available um, what works best on your saw etc etc uh, once you've decided on that, say, let's say we'll go with this thick one. Uh, we've decided on our timber. Cut all your timber, so you've got a, a whole stack of timber. Right. When you get your pattern made, this, this pattern is made for thin timber. So this is the thin timber. You can see that it fits against the pattern and it's flush to the edge here. Obviously, if we use fatter wood it comes past the edge see past the edge here so you end up with a bigger dome and it's you don't want that trust me it's not good uh, so what you do is you once you've made your struts and you've made your uh, triangle templates put your fat molding on and you'll see that you just glue your timber here against this edge here to make that makes the jig effectively smaller than, than, this, than this size so then then you can use 
uh, your thick mold to build your triangles. And the size we were going to use, uh, this is a finished frame, uh, and you can see that um, it will slightly flex when I pull it, but it's pretty, pretty sturdy. Um, when that's joined together with another piece, it'll, it'll, it'll make a a nice solid approximately 2 by 2 size strut like that now that's this is nice and solid it's a small dome so that's all we need okay next question I often get is what size screw should I, should I use uh, the, you'll have seen in the building method how, how the screw goes we have three screws going here to fix this frame together uh, t uh, screw sizes are a little bit like timber sizes you can use any size you want but what you're looking for is a good strong joint. The hubs are the main structural element of the dome, so you're going to need to have this a pretty good strong joint. If you look at this here, you can see you, if you test your joints, do it one, and give it a twist. There should be little or no movement in that joint. I'll show you uh, a bad one so you can compare. Here we go, this is a bad one. Used, if you use too small a screw, can you see that moving? It's not a huge problem, but it, uh, on a big dome, you don't really want that. So, start, literally, let's have a look at the screw size. The minimum size is this one here. On, this is on small domes. You want the probably the biggest screw you can you can fit down the timber without splitting anything. Um, let me see, let me just see here now. Here we go. I'll get this back out again. On here, obviously you need a, a, a screw that will go through here and into there. So that's what you're looking at. Let's just hold that there for you. So you can see that's rough. That would be a, a good screw for that size. If you're using a thicker frame, you obviously need longer screws. But you want uh, build one, test one, and they should be nice and strong, so they don't so they don't um, move or anything. You should actually even be able to hang off one because it's. I'll just give it. There you go. They're not even. There's a tiny little bit of flex in the frame, but there's no give in the corners. If you can do that, you're good to go.